What's up, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube, everybody out there on YouTube land, it's Philip 20 today, and we're on solar power, electricity, and electronics. Got a couple things I want to talk to you about. This is my first year of building a solar array. I wanted to talk about how it's uh, been to me, how would I go about doing it again, and if I would to go back and get all my money back, would I do that or would I go back with the solar array? Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the first part. Starting up the solar array, I went into it with some knowledge, but not a lot of knowledge. The knowledge I had was limited to uh, none on whole house systems. Basically, I had a 24 volt inverter uh, that I've had for like three years or so. And it was the idea, the reason why I bought the inverter. I'm going to be using free power. You know, I don't want to pay for electricity. I want free power. So, solar arrays is a really, really good way to get energy from sunlight after you know it's paid for itself it's free it's gonna you know you have to wait for six years to get paid back for 10 years depending on the type of system you build depending on how much you use it for instance if you do an off-grid system it's going to take longer to get your money back than it would if you do a grid tie system grid tie systems are less expensive grid tie systems have no real repercussion of having a battery system you have no battery system in a, a grid tie system. It's a really good way to go about looking at it. With a grid tie system, you would have none of this in your garage. It, it's you have uh, micro grid tie inverters on your panels. It's the easiest way to do it currently. It's the current technology. Is you put a grid uh, tie inverter on your panel and you tie it in on the roof. And from the roof, it goes straight to a meter, which I don't like. They make in Tennessee, you put, have to put an additional meter in and sell to them at wholesale and buy back at premium. So you wouldn't have none of this. You wouldn't have power if the grid goes down. Like if there's a big snowstorm, the grid goes down, you lose all that. So all this stuff on a, a grid tie system it's gone. There's no worry about batteries. You just plug your stuff in and use it as you normally do. There's no change in lifestyle. With an off-grid solar array, and you want to get the most out of it, you've got to discharge your batteries at night and recharge them back the next day. So you have to have a big enough system to charge your batteries and power the house at the same time. So you got to take consideration at my house, we use five kilowatts at night if you know everything's running on a normal basis. Everything's plugged in. For instance, we have two fridges. We go to bed. When we wake up, it'd be like five kilowatts. I have reduced that down to about two kilowatts um, because it is stressful to run on these batteries and run for a long time it's really hard it kills it it just it kills the batteries run them because i only got a small bank but if you take consideration of draining the batteries down you get more the next day instead of when you're in absorb mode or float mode you're not making nowhere near as much power as you could have been making so if you had a much larger battery bank like 36 lead acid batteries that are t105 batteries that would be more than sufficient. Uh, $4,000 worth of batteries. That'll last you 10, 15 years, 10 years at the most, they say. But I bought the minimum that I, I bought the maximum I could afford at the time, which was 12 batteries. And then I switched to a 48 volt system. So that narrowed me down to eight batteries because you can't put more batteries in series with that. You just can't do it. You can't add batteries to that. So, you know, that's totally fine. No big deal. But the biggest situation is 
how much power you're allowed to use at night. And the reason why I switched from the AIMS inverter to the magnum inverter is because the AIMS inverter uses 180 watts to be on. The magnum inverter uses, you know, 40 watts to be on. They say 26. It's not 26. It's 40 watts. And that 40 watts, I can run it all night long with my laptop modem router and stuff like that. You know, I can run it at 200 watts all night long and be good to go. The AIMS inverter would drain more, It'd drain that just to be on. So basically, you know, I can use about one to two kilowatts a night and deal with these batteries with timers on refrigerators, etc., etc. Uh, the new refrigerator we put in, it is about the same amount of power consumption as other refrigerator that's on when it's on a timer and when it's on a timer it uses less energy because it runs less but I, I really like being the off-grid system because I can turn the breakers off the main panel off and I'm, I'm still I still have power I mean yes it's very uh, difficult to do the system but it's rewarding if you have medical issues and you would need it but I'm just going to go ahead and let that go from right there and I'm going to say thank you for watching for this video. I'm going to have more coming up like this talking about my experience with solar and is it a benefit for you? I like it. Not everybody's going to like it because it's a change in lifestyle. It's a change in how much power you use and it's a, it's a, uh, it's a new chore. If you don't like washing dishes, you don't like doing this, you don't like doing that, don't like cleaning the house, well you're going to have to do something like a grid tile if you want to do solar. This is Phil 20 with solar power, electricity, and electronics. And I'm going to holler at y'all later. Hello ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.